Hey guys, thought I would share with you two of my favorite stock market analysts in this first segment. Tom Lee shares his thoughts on the markets on yesterday's episode of Last Call. And in the second segment, Josh Brown shares some of his stock picks on the halftime report that was aired earlier today. In the final segment, I analyze some of Josh Brown's stock picks using the Ichimoku indicator. Let me know in the comments section who your favorite stock analyst is. And here's Tom Lee. Who might be right? Let's talk about it with another guy who's pretty successful in his own right. That is Tom Lee. He is the managing partner and head of research at Fundstrat. If you had to go on Team Cohen, which I guess is the Mets, and Team Einhorn, like I'll call that the Brewers because he's from Milwaukee, which team would you be on, Tom Lee? Well, I hope I don't get judged, but I'd be on the Team Mets and Cohen. Why is that? Lay it out. Well, I think that uh, the reason the idea of cuts was being rolled back was the January and February inflation reports globally showed inflation was accelerating. And part of that is a statistical aberration. There's just some really poor seasonal adjustments that take have, that take place. The March CPI reports coming out of Europe have shown a, a big collapse from those January, February levels. Like Eurozone, it's back to 2.4%. The March CPI for the U.S. is coming out next week, which is April 10th. And by the time the Fed meets in June, there's going to be a total of three inflation reports, March, April, May. I think by then, markets are going to be a lot more confident that inflation is falling and the three cuts actually may be too low. You know, there's possibility there's more than three cuts this year. OK, wow. I, I you know, I, I tweeted out a poll yesterday and uh, I think we might get less or maybe none. But that's why you do what you do. And, and I sit here on this side of the camera, Tom. If we get one cut, if we get two cuts, if we get three cuts, if we get four cuts, does that change your end of year S&P target? I mean, does, a, does another half a percentage point off the Fed funds rate matter to the S&P 500 in the short term? Brian, I think it, the, cuts, the number of cuts won't matter as much as the reason the Fed is titrating its cuts. If the Fed is titrating its cuts because the economy is showing resilience, um, so it's strong, but not necessarily inflationary. I think the market would take that as as quite dovish because it's really a Fed trying to manage the business cycle. If the Fed is cutting back its number of cuts because inflation is reaccelerating, that that would actually be incrementally bearish. So I think that the rationale actually is more important than the number of cuts. Okay, well said, Tom. I want, I want to switch gears a bit. The Federal Reserve. We've been focused on inflation for three years, but the Federal Reserve's dual mandate also looks at job growth. And a new article today in the Wall Street Journal highlights a rather curious trend in the difference between the two ways that the federal government measures employment. And if you read between the lines in the journal's article, it implies that much of our recent job growth, maybe a majority of it, is due to immigration. Much of that, of course, would be undocumented immigration and those seeking asylum. In fact, the CBO, Tom, just raised population growth estimates to account for the millions who've crossed the border in the last few years, leaving out all political arguments about the border. We're talking about the markets here. Do we care, and Morgan Stanley alluded to the same issue kind of yesterday, do we care where the job growth really comes from when we're looking at markets and the Fed? Uh, Brian, it's, it's uh, objectively, it's actually a good thing because we know the Phillips curve's kind of been busted. That's supposed to measure unemployment rates and wage inflation. And we've had unemployment sort of pinned at these levels and wage inflation isn't accelerating. So it shows that we're adding jobs, we're adding to the worker supply and actually adding to aggregate demand without creating inflation. It, and on, on balance, that's quite positive. And does it matter where this labor supply is being filled? It's a great question. But as you know, I mean, the U.S. is essentially a nation of immigrants anyway so i don't i don't think necessarily immigrant labor driving you know wage growth and demand growth and filling jobs is, is a bad thing yeah and, and people are raising their job growth estimates in part because of it politics aside uh it is adding to the job market and i've seen some estimates that maybe it could be all the jobs that have been added in the last couple of years could be related to that uh political hot button issue tom lee Long and strong, optimistic as always, Tom, we appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. As, all right. Many, many stocks in this more broad market over the last month at least 
have gone up a lot on the prospect that we're going to get these rate cuts that we think we're going to get. Well, you know, whether it's Powell yesterday or Bostic or whomever, and you're going to get some more Fed speak, a lot of it today. And I think we're going to have some headlines coming up as uh, some of those speakers uh, make their remarks that the market's gotten a little and a lot of these stocks have gotten a little ahead of themselves on what will turn out to be false hopes. So we're in this moment right now, and we've been in this moment uh, for, for a little while where we're back to higher interest rates on, let's say, the two year, the 10 year, negative for a certain type of stock, big stocks, important stocks. Um, but then when those rate fears ease for the day, it's like a green light to go out and buy them. It's very reminiscent, Judge, and, and you'll probably remember this, of the risk on, risk off stuff from 2011, 2012, when on a Monday it would look like uh, Europe is Armageddon, and then the next day European currencies would rally, and there would be this like whole group of stocks, you could just blindfold yourself and buy any of them. We're doing that now with interest rates, and it's fun, it's interesting. Eventually, everyone learns the game and it stops working, but look at today. You get, this, you get the rate fears cool off a little bit. What are your top three leadership groups? Surprise, to su surprise. Real estate, number one, up 1% on the day. Consumer discretionary, number two, up almost 1%. Uh, number three is industrials. Number four is tech. It's like surprise, surprise. So today Russell. is... So here's what <laughs> I want to do. I want to coin the term. We're going to call it cut on, cut off. Today is a cut on day. Right. You got a little bit of easing in, in rates. People are a little bit more sanguine about, you know, what's happening with the inflation story. And they'll let these stocks run. If you get something that seems to be negative on the inflation front or tomorrow's jobs report is a blowout number or average hourly earnings are way ahead of, of schedule, you're going to see it be a cut off market. And you're going to see industrials down big. They'll crush the real estate names. They'll hit consumer discretion. So this is the new game. I hope you all learn it. I hope we can have this game for, I don't know, a, a, as many weeks as we have until June, July, and then eventually it'll end. But that's what's happening right okay. now. And you could you could track it yourself on your screen. So, All right, we're back. Crude, uh, taking a bit of a break today. It has been on quite the run and you Josh Brown have your mind on energy and you're looking at some stocks specifically that you think are looking pretty interesting these days I do thanks Scott last week as my final trade on Thursday I wanted to highlight IEO which is the explorers and producers ETF it tends to own the more high beta energy names Everything I'm about to tell you also applies to the larger names. The entire group is going higher, in my opinion. I think this could be a leadership group when we look back in December, uh, just based on the strength that I'm seeing here. And I want to take you to trade school for two seconds. You'll hear this term tossed around a lot on, on this network and others, overbought. And a lot of people don't even understand that, that there's a statistical definition to overbought. And what they further don't understand is overbought is not necessarily negative. So the connotation when someone says, oh, that stock's up too much, it's overbought. Ask yourself the second question, though. Why is it overbought? Is there maybe a fundamental reason why everyone is accumulating this stock? There might be. Maybe it's overbought because the stock is going to keep going and go higher. So you have overbought names in the energy patch right now. And I, and I, I submit to you, that's not a reason not to be in them. Maybe you don't buy them right this second. But here's what I want you to consider. You have the average RSI, that's relative strength, at about 78 in the XLE, which is the energy ETF, the largest cap names. This is the highest reading of all time for the RSI in the XLE. We have data going back to 2004. So in two decades, we haven't seen this much buying pressure in these names. And I'm telling you right now, to me, that doesn't feel like the top. That feels like a reintroduction to this space for people who haven't looked at it in a couple of years. Now, you look at crude at 85, the highest level since October. It's up 17% year to date. Then you think about how underweight most managers are to the E&P names, and you get excited. So here are some we charts that look that. exceptional. Carrie, I'm going to come to you in a minute. <laughs> ConocoPhillips, this is the largest component in the IEO ETF that I just mentioned. It's about 18% of the weighting. This thing is on fire. Marathon, MPC. Take a look at Diamondback, F-A-N-G, cute name. Um, the other one is uh, Phillips 66, which is, of course, a refiner. These stocks are all overbought. That's short term. In the longer term, there's a reason this much money is piling into these stocks. And I urge you, if they're not on your ticker, 
put them on your ticker, keep an eye on them, because I think there are some really exciting things developing. The JB. Patty, give me that chart. What I'm showing you here is a <laughs> confirmed breakout in shares of Charles Schwab. I do not own this stock. I may eventually buy it. I like to front run myself a little bit but and make me. sure you can. <laughs> for us. Uh, anyway, technically, I love the way this looks, and uh, I think she's going higher. All right. Good stuff. Thanks, everybody. I'll see you on the bell. Extend Hello, here. and welcome to Blue Cloud Trading. My name is George. This is the segment of the show where I'll be taking a look at some of the stocks that were discussed on the show. Hope you guys enjoyed the uh, appearances of Tom Lee and Josh Brown. Definitely let me know which of those two guys is your favorite in the comments section down below. Today was a very negative day. You can see here the indices were down. Dow was down 1.35%. NASDAQ down one4 S&P 500 down 1.23% and the Russell 2000 down 1%. It almost looks like a water slide here. I mean, there's a lot of selling that took place. It all started around 1 p.m. There were, you know, a lot of reasons for this. Um, you know, this one article, for example, came out, swelling U.S. debt could tip U.S. markets into crisis as soon as next year. This is a Wharton professor that mentioned that. And uh, here's some more information of uh, some of the news that came out. AMD stock suffers worst day in almost a year. Dow posts worst day since March 2023 banking crisis. Here's some more. Dow posts worst four-day drop since October as stock market route intensifies. Fed funds futures point to June rate cut. S&P 500 sectors all fall Thursday afternoon. You can see all of the sectors were in the red. We're going to take a look at those on the charts in a few moments. Uh, this is not good stuff here. And even the volatility index was up, and I'll show you that in a chart as well. It was up quite a bit today. It actually jumped. Um, it says here, close volatility, otherwise known as the VIX, was more up more than 12% in recent trade at 16.57. And uh, so let's uh, take a look at the charts now. Let's start with the SPY. So I have... A lot of the indices here, uh, the, the Fab 7 stocks. Uh, let's see, what else we're going to show? Some of Josh Brown's picks here. And we're going to look through the sectors. We're going to look at Bitcoin, US dollar, VIX, real estate, gold, silver. And we're going to do that very quickly. I'm not going to spend too much time on, on these because, you know, we don't want to make this video super long. But with the help of the Ichimoku indicator, we're going to be able to accomplish that. And so that is uh, this indicator, by the way, just very quickly developed in the 1930s and introduced to the general public in the late 60s. Uh, and this was this stock, this particular indicator can quickly, uh, you can visually uh, see when stock is above, for example, the Ichimoku cloud, that's very bullish. When price is above the Tenkinson, which is the highs and lows of the last nine periods, divided by two, that's positive. And when price is above the Kijinson, which is the highs and lows of the last 26 periods, divided by two, that's positive. This white line that you see is closing prices reflected 26 periods into the past. And the Ichimoku indicator projects 26 period, the, I'm sorry, the, the Ichimoku cloud projects 26 periods into the future. This purple line is the highs and lows of the last 52 periods divided by two. So it's similar to a 50-day moving average, only a little bit more nuanced. It has a lot more information because it's basically averaging out those last 52 periods. And then the Tenkins, I'm sorry, the Senku Span A is kind of unique because it takes the calculations, the highs and lows of the Tenkinson, highs and lows of the Kijinson, divides that by two and projects it into the future. So right now, uh, what has happened today is very negative. Um, you can see a, a big red candle here on high volume. The directional movement index has turned up on the negative side, as you can see right there, after this very long period where it was not. And uh, price has closed under both of these two moving averages on the daily chart. When we switch it to the weekly, though, we're still in a very strong market, okay, uptrend. The question is, will this be a short-term correction? If it is, you know, the next level is probably going to be around the 503.51. You can see based on that little candle there, that pivot candle, when price got above it, 
it found support and then has continued. So this is probably where it's, it may find some resi I'm sorry, some support. It's about 1.73%. We'll see how the market, you know, goes tomorrow. Um, but it's not looking good right now. This may be not terrible time to take profits if you've been long this market for a very long time. QQQ, and then of course, wait for things to, you know, hopefully bounce. Uh, and th that's my suggestion. The QQQs, uh, also similar situation, big red candle It's called an engulfing bearish engulfing pattern. Not good. Coming close to the support level here, but we still are above the Ichimoku cloud. So that's where we're at with the, the Qs. The DIA, that's for the Dow Jones ETF. This one actually got, went down even further. It actually closed into the, the cloud, but did not break through the 384.92, which is this prior low based on that pivot candle. So that's the thing I'd be looking out for. You can see multiple days of negative volume here on the uh, you know Dow Jones ETF. It's, it's been looking the weakest uh, recently. As I mentioned in previous videos, you can see the, all these negative candles here. All right, let's keep going. Russell 2000 also, um, you know, has been staying between this 212.25 level and this, uh, you can see this uptrending uh, trend line here. It may find some support here, hopefully. If it uh, breaks through, it's probably gonna come down to the cloud you know, but right now we are still technically in a strong uptrend. We do have higher highs and higher lows. And you can actually see those very clearly here. So we have a low here, higher low here, higher low here, and we're still moving up. We also have a higher high here than this high and that high and that high. So we're in a uptrend on the Russell 2000. Okay, some ETFs that I've been following recently, I wanted to just bring it up, uranium down 4.03 but i do want to you know point out something important look where it stopped right on the cloud and the cloud can act as a very strong level of support it also has the bottom of the cloud it has the tenkinson and the kijinson as additional support so um but we could see a another day or two uh down potentially in the near future IEO is one of the ETFs that um, Josh Brown uh, mentioned earlier today on the show. It has been showing a lot of strength. I talked about it yesterday as well. Um, this stock has showed strength, but we are now at a, um, basically at a crossroads here because we've developed a doji. And that is essential, whoops, let's fix that. What the doji signifies is indecision. Okay, and what we have to pay attention to now is the highs and lows of that candle. Very important. So if price tomorrow gets under that low, you want to probably be exiting this stock because it's probably going to drop down further and we don't know exactly where that level is going to be. This would be a good place to start taking some profits if you've been long. If it gets above this though tomorrow, let's say we get a bullish day tomorrow for whatever reason. Well, then that's going to cancel this out, okay? And then we can continue on, you know, to higher pastures. All right, let's continue now. Let's go to some of these other stocks. Amazon, you know, on the daily chart, you can see it's still in a very strong uptrend. We did get under the Tankinson. I don't think there's anything really negative here on this stock, except for the fact that it dropped today 1.32%. Microsoft, same thing. Meta is a little bit more concerning because this candle, uh, I don't particularly like these shooting star. It's called the shooting star. When you have a longer wick on the top and a small red body, um, if tomorrow price gets and closes under that low, the low of that candle is 510.58. Um, Meta could potentially drop further, uh, probably down to the 476 level, and that's about 7.53% away from where we currently are. NVIDIA, uh, you can see it's getting close to its 841.66 level of support. It broke through the Kijinson today. Um, we, I've been warning about NVIDIA since we got this inverse hammer uh, back on March 8th. And so this 
as you can see, we've been just kind of stuck in this range for a little bit now. We have not broken through the support level though. So we're still, you know, uh, I'm still a hold on NVIDIA for the time being, but if I was holding a position, which I'm not, <laughs> I got out of it, but I'm just saying it's a hold generally speaking um, because of the fact that we haven't broken through that support level. All right, let's keep going. Google, here's another one that has been doing pretty good these last few days, right? It broke above 153.98. That's a weekly level of resistance based on this prior pivot candle. But now if tomorrow, for example, price gets under that low right here, um, I'd be exiting Google, all right? Let's see, let's keep going with this now. Um, Apple, still holding up on that level that I drew yesterday or the day before, when did I draw, draw that? Created April 2nd. All right, so it's based on this, uh, let's see, where, let's go to the daily chart. That's a daily support level. It's based on this low over here, these lows that you see. We found support here, we found support here, we found support here. So we still haven't broken through. That's pretty positive, but I don't like this candle and I don't, I, it's hard to tell what's gonna happen. We have to wait until tomorrow for Apple. Has not broken down yet though. That's a positive sign. And with Tesla, Tesla was up 1.62%. It's low of 160.51. Uh, it seemed to have bounced ab above it here, but we are still under the cloud. My rules are basically never enter a long position when price is under the Ichimoku cloud, okay? Not a good idea. You're in a downtrend. It's hard to pick the low, the absolute bottom, all right? And uh, we could see this thing drop even further in the future. So let's keep going here to, now we're gonna look at some of stocks, uh, the stocks that Josh mentioned on the show. ConocoPhillips. This has had a really big run. Uh, let's take a look at the weekly chart. Also looking very strong. This is a candle that is a, it's a pivot candle, which means we have to pay attention to it. And uh, let me circle it. If price gets under that low, I'm going to draw the, let's see, the low of that candle is 131.05. There we go. Gets under 131.05 tomorrow. It's probably going to drop. If it just drops down to the Tenkinson, we're looking at a 3.2% 3. 3 drop. If it drops down to the Kijinson, 8.29%, where it's the next level of support be found. So just uh, keep an eye on that one if you're holding it long. Fang Diamondback Energy uh, created a bearish engulfing pattern, another bearish uh, pattern here. Again, you want to look out for the lows there on that candle. Let's see, what is that? The low is $200.57. IEO, we already covered that one. MPC, Marathon Petroleum, another spinning top or regular, basically a pivot candle once again. If price gets under the low of 215.40, it's most likely going to drop. PSX, Phillips 66. This one also looking negative. It's a red spinning top. Another situation where if price gets under the $170 level, it's probably going to drop down to the Tenkinson. It's another th about 3.37% drop potentially. Charles Schwab, another stock that Josh mentioned. Today, it actually closed under the Tankinson, very bearish. It's been stuck in this range though. Uh, you can see the little box that we're stuck in right now. So um, I'd be more concerned if it gets under these this low and that low is about 70, 90. So if we get a close under that level, uh, that would be concerning to me with Charles Schwab. All right, let's go to the, to the sectors now very quickly. We'll start off with the materials. This one, a bearish engulfing, negative candle, not looking good. I would be exiting tomorrow if price gets under the low of 91.73. XHB um, is holding up on the Kijinsen. It's holding up on the Kijinsen. If it closes under the Kijin, under that level, and the Kijinsen level is, we can look at it, uh, it's also labeled in this box as baseline. It's $106.82, I'm sorry, 106.82. So if it closes under that level, 
expected to drop and more, more than likely it's going to find support at this low uh, which is about 102.75 xlk ve coming very close to the ichimoku cloud now where it should find some support it was down 1.58 percent and uh you know we broke through this box that i've been talking about whoops right there you can see it just barely closed under that box so i'd be concerned here with technology um, but we are still technically in an uptrend we haven't broken the prior low now the prior low would probably be this level you see this uh, candle uh, let's see what the low is 197.07 so let's fix that there whoops 197.07 we'll color it a light red it signifies daily support levels where the blue ones are weekly, okay? Um, so that would be the area if it gets under there. Now that's a long ways from here. It's about, no, not, not so far away. It's about three and a half percent away. But if we get a close under 197.07, I'd be extremely concerned about it. We may get a bounce uh, tomorrow or on Monday once we get come close to this Ichimoku cloud, if we even get to it. All right, let's keep going, XLY found support at this 177, 73 level. That was created by me on April 3rd of 2024, yesterday. Um, and so, yeah, it's based, it was supposed to be based on this candle. Let's make sure it's the exact price amount. Low is 177.57 on that. So let's fix that, 177.57. <clears throat> All right, so we're still above that level. If it gets under 177.57, watch out. Financials, um, you know, another bad day here, down 1.13%, finding support at the Kijinsen. And look, many times in the past, price has come down to the Kijinsen, came to it right there, and then bounced. Came close to it here, bounced. Found support here, found support here, bounced. Uh, so, you know, I wouldn't be ultra ultra um concerned unless price closes under that the kijinsen which is 4117 all right energy those were the financials we just uh, looked at energy is also has had a nice big run i understand you know it's it's a very bullish place to be right now but look how many days it's been up you know, five days in a row. And here's the sixth day. We're down 0.06%. This, there could be a change that takes place here. If we, however, tomorrow get above the high of that candle of 97.60, it will cancel out this reversal candle. All right. Industrials. Let's look at industrials. XLI is the ticker symbol. This one came close to the Kijinsen, still holding up. I'm not too overly concerned. I know it's a negative candle. I know it's a negative pattern, but we're holding up above the Kijinsen. Very strong support level. This 26 period highs and lows divided by two. XLP has closed under this low. And that happened yesterday. So, um, but we don't have a lower high yet. I Nonetheless, I wouldn't be ultra interested in entering any new long positions in this stock since it broke through that low all right and uh the low was uh 7489 there we go so it would have to get above that level now and break through this high the high of that candle before i'd even consider a long position again uh healthcare ooh Dang, look at that. So this one broke. It broke the weekly chart. Let's look at the weekly chart. This 143.42 level. See, I have it marked right over here. That was back on April 8th of 2022. It has now broken through. And uh, we had some tweezer tops in the weekly chart. These two tweezer top pattern. Okay, then we had, then price was stuck. And it's finally made a decision. I said, we're either going to break above or we're going to break below this level. And that will be probably the determining factor of where things are going. You can also see that this ADX, here's another important clue 
of what's happening right now. The ADX where it was moving up, showing that momentum was very strong. See that sharp curve down? That's a negative right there. It's telling us momentum's come out now. There should there may be a continuation here. The volume on uh, today, I'm sorry, this week is also higher than the one than the prior week. Not good. So that's what the daily looks like. And we can see that the ADX is moving up, but on a negative trend, right? The negative DI line is above the positive DI line. That's very negative. All right, let's keep going. Utilities, uh, finding some support at the Tankinson on the daily. And on the weekly, we are still above the cloud, but we, we have formed this um, negative candle. We do need to get above 66.70 though, before I'd consider a long position in utilities. The BITO ETF was up 3.95%, probably based on the fears that are of what's happening right now with the stocks. So these last three days, you can see Bitcoin, this ETF has been moving up, but it's still under a support level. I'm sorry, this resistance level of $30.30. So it needs to get above that and the moving averages before I consider a new long position. Another problem is we have a uh, downslope that's uh, transpiring here. So we have a lower high right? This high is lower than that one. So not a good situation right now. We also, let's see, did we get under that low? 2481. 2830 is the low here. Yeah, 2841. Oh, it did get, it did get under it. So just barely. Anyway, let's keep going. US dollar, UUP is the ticker symbol. This is the daily chart. This can help us predict a little bit of what might be transpiring in the near term as far as the market is concerned. When the US dollar is strengthened and is moving up, it can be a uh, sort of a warning, you know, that the markets could decline. Now, it's been on the daily chart. We're looking at the daily chart right now. It has been moving up steadily. We have a higher high. Than the prior high, higher low than the prior low. On the weekly, however, we don't. We have a lower low than that low. We have a, we do have a higher high from the prior high. So we've created this megaphone pattern. And when you look at the overall picture where it's down sloping and price has developed on Thursday. Now we, we still have to wait one more day for this candle to form because we're looking at Thursday's pricing. So it's developing a spinning top. That's actually positive for the stock market because it's find, finding resistance on the weekly, which is a stronger chart to be looking at. It's more important than the daily. Uh, the weekly can, so if we get a reversal next week and the US dollar starts dropping again, it, we should see a continuation of this rally that we've been having, okay? So next week is really gonna be important. This Friday is gonna be important too, but Monday, you know, we wanna see where things go. If it gets under, the 28.22 on the US dollar, I think that's going to be, we may see a continuation of the of the rally we've been experiencing. VIX, here's that big sharp move up. It went from yesterday's closing of $13 and one penny up to $16.35. So it made a big jump, right? 14.1%. Uh, we are still under the cloud. So that's bullish. I'm sorry, bullish for the markets. We want the VIX to be low. We want it to be in a downtrend. We want it to be under the cloud. When when the VIX breaks above and makes new highs, and that's going to show volatility in the markets. It's going to be this is a fear index, and when there's fear, people start selling. Let's hope there's not a continuation here. Notice something important, guys. This is really interesting. Do you see that? Right. Wait, hold on. Let me fix that. See where it found resistance right there towards the end of the day right there on the on the cloud on the bottom of the cloud so that's good it's really important let's look at this on the daily chart and actually on a five minute okay so it's just started to decline a little bit here nothing major but let's hope it doesn't continue okay let's keep going real estate um i've been talking about its weakness right i, I said we have a lower high than this high and it's been declining, right? We have a slope here. We got just closed under a support level of 38.20, what is it, 38.28. And so I don't like, you know, I'm, I'm not interested in real estate. The XLRE ETF is not 
of interest to me right now. Um, gold, it was actually down 0.57% today. Let's look at the daily chart. So interesting that it's developed a pivot candle. I'd be concerned about this one too. So like if we get a price tomorrow getting under the low of 211.02, probably be exiting with a profits. Be very careful here. This was also in high volume. You know, gold has made a nice run. It, sh it may pull back. If it does, it's probably going to drop about 2.5% or so to, to find support at its equilibrium level, right? Which is usually between the Tengensen and the Kijensen. And uh, it's just natural. Uh, it's like a magnet. It always comes back to it, right? Always does. So let's keep going. Silver has created a pivot candle, has reached this high of $24.90 based on the weekly chart. Okay, that, is, let me circle it for you. It's based on this pivot candle right there. So we reached that target. <clears throat> I think that's it. I think we now have to wait and assess the situation. I'd probably be taking some profits now. If price gets above it, the high of 24.95, which is this candle here, uh, then I'd reconsider and, con you know, getting back into silver. But at this point, I'd be taking some profits. And finally, just a Bitcoin USD, which is, shows us the price of Bitcoin. It's up to $67,942. You can see it's stuck in the equilibrium level here. It has not broken above the Tankinson. And so it's not a buy for me, uh, especially since we have a lower high here. You know, we'd have to take out this prior. We'd have to get above the highs here before I'd consider Bitcoin um, for a re-entry, okay? And uh, folks, if you like this software, there is a link down below, and I strongly suggest you check it out because it can be very helpful. Uh, there's also a link on my YouTube page, the main page here. So there's a link right under the name. You can see it there, tc2000.com slash download slash blue cloud trading. And with this link, it will bring you to this page here where you can check out the pricing. You can enter your email address. You can download, download it for Windows or Mac. Um, the pricing, you get a $25 coupon, all right? And if you look at the pricing here, just to show you that very quickly, <clears throat> they've got the silver, gold, and platinum. The silver is as low as $7.49 a month, which is ultra, ultra cheap. Um, but all you get for that with that is the, the charts and the watch, and you can create watch lists. If you want some of the other features like the easy scan and filtering and, Setting up 100, you know, you can track up to 100 alerts. You can do that with the gold. Uh, you can also get fundamentals, fundamental information, uh, like I have on my charts that show the profit margins and whatnot, as you can see right there. Um, and with the platinum, you get these extra things, like, you know, you can create market indicators from conditions. Um, you can filter for specific points in time, you know. You can get up to $300 discount per year with brokerage account and it can tr you can track up to 1000 alerts so that's pretty cool if you want to have real-time data during the day if you want to day trade for example um, if you're a new trader I don't recommend it but if you um, have some experience with trading it's another $15 for real-time on the US stocks you can see the how it's all set up here and with all of that hope you guys have a great day I will catch you in the next video and I'll go over some of my subscribers stocks in that next video. I'll catch you all in the next one.